Hello everyone, welcome to my new video. In this video I will make a small part out of aluminum from a four radio control car. So I'll take a piece of aluminum and make a part like this. The difficulty of this part is all these angles. It's very easy to do on the CNC machine. But if you don't have a CNC machine and uh, or you like to work with uh, manual machine, a milling machine, um, and there is some techniques with which you could also do all these angles. And basically, uh, the general stuff on this part uh, is accuracy of these holes. So basically, this four holes and these six holes. These two holes is almost not used on the car. So where this part is located, it's, if you will take a car, uh, this part is located over here and the front uh, shocks is connected to this part. Uh, it's quite often that uh, this part is possible to broke and actually uh, there is a different thickness of this part on the older cars it was quite thick, on the newer cars it's uh, more thin and different geometry of these parts and as you can see it also was more thick in this uh, place and the older car and the newer cars it's more thin um, and one of my friends was broken this part and I was told him that okay I could, make, could try to make it for you so newer car from where this part was removed it was located exactly here and we will place aluminum piece here so as you can see there is important stuff like these angles these four holes and these six holes uh, where the shocks is connected as well as a thickness of uh, on this part so I have a bit more thick aluminum piece and what I will do as I need to have the same thickness uh, at the end uh, of the part uh, I will mill a bit over these holes that uh, connecting of the shocks are on the same level as on the on more thin part but all the piece will be more thick of course if you will talk about the weight, it will be not uh, as good, but at the same moment, part will be much stronger. So let's start. Let's start doing it. I will start from holes, as it's a main part of geometry of this detail, of this part. So what I'm doing. I'm just going over the hole in the original detail and drilling aluminum part. I will use two screws to fix parts together that they are not moving. After screwing them up, I could move the part in the vices and drill the holes on the other side. And we'll do the same for the other side. So I'll move one screw from here to the other side. Two screws it will be enough to fix the parts together that they are not moving or almost not moving. And as I said, the main geometry of this part exactly the holes inside it. So after the holes I will just mill all the material around and remove it. So now that when the parts are screwed each to another I could release the vise and move the part into the vise. I need to move them because I need to move it because 
um, otherwise devices will touch the mailing machine that I'm using for ordering on the holes. And again, absolutely the same method with the drill on the holes. So I'm going with the drill over the hole in the original part, aligning everything together, finding the best angle to hold the devices. I could hold them by my hand, so it's not a big drill and not a big part. And the I'm stopping the drill because I want to have as less damage as possible for the original part because of the side of the drill. So it's kind of technique that I found for myself, which I could use to drill these holes. Now when all holes are done, I'm marking the piece on my aluminum part with the marker I have. So I'm just crushing aluminum and this crush just goes all over the part. I'm trying to do that as accurate as possible because I will use this as my mock for future milling around this part. So I will of course need to remove the part from the aluminum for milling, not to damage it with the milling cutter, uh, but I will use these marks exactly as a visual line where I need to cut. Only the few points I will need to make it more or less accurate is these angles. I will use for them the round table I have and as the center of the square, uh, square I will use these two holes. I think it's quite similar way I will do with these holes so I will Use these holes as a radius and I will cut these angles. But all the straight lines I will cut over these marks that I made now. And it's time to untouch parts each from another. Unscrew parts. And now, as you can see, I have a contour of the part on the aluminum, which I could use. Of course, if I will mark in front something like, uh, or paint somehow aluminum, these lines will be more visible, but nevertheless, I see them. And it's possible to use them as uh, contours for cutting. And now, just a million. Now time for cutting and I need to align my piece. So how am I, do how I am doing it? Uh, I'm using a, just a needle that are on top and um, when I'm moving the part over the table, I'm aligning it as much that needle is just going by the line that I have on the part all the time. So when I will cut, I will cut exactly near this line. So for the parts that are not necessary to be exactly with the dimensions or the sizes, this method works quite well. So now I'm removing this and now I could cut. Now I'm finishing last line cut and we'll go for radius cuts after that. Ah! 
So it's what I get for now. And I'll show you compared to the original part. And as I mentioned, I was made a bit more material here to make it more strong. And still this radius, this radius, this one and this one need to be finished. And that's how it looks now. So only four places, this one, this one, this one, and this one. And part will be done. So now the radius cuts. Uh, I'm using, of course, my round table. It's how it's at the end, so I am already cut one. It's how I'm assembling everything for the cutting, but I'm not really trust this three millimeter screw, so I'm cutting just one tenth of millimeter. And now I'm show you how I'm doing it. And now is the last point. Almost like an original. So this one is new and this one is original. Now is the time to check how it will work on the car. So I'm starting from the shock stands. I will not screw them completely because I will still use my carbon part. And this is our result. It looks like some tuning option. So that's it for this video, hope it was interesting for you and see you in my next videos.